Welcome in to the CHGO White Sox Podcast. Presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook. Download the app today and use promo code CHGO when you sign up. As you can hear, we have a live audience from Oak Lawn, Illinois, at the Whistle Sports Bar and Grill. 4911 West 95th Street. Come out. We're doing a live pregame and a watch party for opening day. The first time since 1968 where all MLB teams are playing. Vinny Duber is here. You can follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. Need more audio. It's like you guys just don't like us talking to this <laughs> with no audio. Did you end it? Oh, oh we're it should good. Be better. All right, we're, we're fine. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> it seems like we're back. Uh, there you go. Hey, we're, right. getting, we're good. We're good. All right. Uh, we still have a game yeah. going on. Thank you for dealing with all of this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Reintroduce it. Uh, we are the CHGO White Sox podcast coming to you live from the whistle uh, at 95th Street and Cicero, 4911 West 95th Street. Don't go to the one in Orland Park. We are here in Oak Lawn, right by Hawk Ford. Uh, we're closer to Chevy, though, uh, yeah. to Vinny's dismay. That's Vinny Dis- Duber. You can join, follow him on Twitter at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. That's Herb Lawrence. Hello. You can follow him on Twitter at Acronwall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. We are streaming live on our YouTube channel. A lot of people have asked us, how do they listen? Just go to YouTube and search CHGO Sports. You can see us live and chat with us live. A lot of the people that are usually in the chat are here. We got Jimbo. We got Stokes. We got all the Southside bums here. Uh, we got and Bruce Luke. and Luke as well. Uh, and, Pete Hand. And, and Pete Hand as well, hiding out there. The bums uh, are in the house too. Very excited. Big Dave from uh, CHGO Bulls is here and uh, our great uh, CHGO Brass, uh, as they, they call themselves. The Andersons uh, Casey, are here. Uh, the Andersons are here. Uh, Casey, uh, Jake, Kevin, uh, and obviously yeah. our two great producers, Joey and Steven. I feel like I'm at like a, uh, I don't even know, like a graduation party at Sean's yes. house because every about five minutes since we've been here, another uh, Sean Anderson <laughs> supporter comes up to me. Oh, yeah. Hey, I love your guys' show. I especially love Sean, of course, because he's my <laughs> local guy. But uh, yeah, it's nice to be here in Sean's backyard. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having us over sean appreciate it i'm very happy i mean i'm happy to see everyone showing out uh it's great to see uh people just coming out of the woodwork too i knew you when we were little oh it's great i I don't know you now Uh, but it's great to get reacquainted with all the people uh baloney saying uh that vinnie duber is breathtaking in person again you could watch us live on chgo sports youtube channel uh we do have a brand new shirt for opening day uh it's always sunny on the south side we have a beautiful day here in Oak Lawn, uh, a nice 50 degree uh, day. It's the, the roof is open here by some <laughs> way of technology. I bet, I bet it won't be open um, in Houston, but it's open in Oak Lawn. <laughs> it is. Uh, and we got the, the nice shirt here. Uh, the vibes are immaculate on the back. It's always sunny on the south side. Uh, you can check that out at chgolocker.com. Astros and White Sox starting off in about an hour at 608 in Minimate Park. Uh, what are your first impressions of the 2023 season? We've talked about the words prove it. And the White Sox put out this promo kind of saying, hey, everyone's doubting us. Everyone's saying we've lost our swagger. It's time to prove it. No, quite the theme, isn't it? Uh, We were talking about it all day yesterday, and now we're talking about it all day leading up to this game. Uh, Certainly the White Sox uh, spent all of the spring talking about how they need to go prove it, talking about how, uh, you know, last year can't happen again. Uh, Well, certainly it's possible that it could happen again, but uh, they're going to try to make sure that it doesn't by uh, cleaning up a lot of the stuff that uh, that really frustrated everybody a year ago. Uh, You know, those base running blunders, those defensive errors, Luis Robert Jr. swinging at pitches a foot off the plate. Uh, They're going to try not to do that 
uh, all this year. And certainly from what we saw in spring training, from what we've heard from the new manager, Pedro Grafol, the attitude adjustment has uh, taken root. And uh, we'll see if that leads to significantly different play. Uh, you know, you know, you can't judge a 162 game season by what you see on opening night. But this will be our first glimpse uh, at a different kind of White Sox team. I mean, if you can't get excited going against the reigning champs while they're handing out rings right in front of you with your former best player on the other side, <laughs> then when's, when is it going to happen? So this is the perfect setup for the White Sox to come out of the gate firing on all cylinders. Like we've been talking about, WBC competitors are ahead of everybody else. So we got two or three of those guys in our clubhouse right now. I'm expecting a big year from Timmy. Like uh, Vinny says, I'm expecting a big year from Lance Lynn. I'm just so excited that we're finally here that I didn't think we we're going to make it. None of us are going to make it for the after the 2022 season. And after that <laughs> offseason, I was like, why would we make it? But we're here. I actually think now that we're here, Hope Springs Eternal, it's a better team than it was last year. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better about this team the closer and closer we get to opening day. And again, we're about an hour away. Uh, we are presented by Goose Island as well. Uh, shout out to our guy, Alan, uh, who's our Southside salesperson who picked the whistle. A beautiful place over here on 4911 West uh, 95th Street. Uh, or is it what's 4911 West Cicero? Something like that. Uh, it's 95th and Cicero. Uh, it's fantastic to be out here in public. But you alluded to it, Herb. The fran face of the franchise for the White Sox for the past 10 years is now on the other team. Uh, you miss Jose Abreu. Well, you don't have to miss him for too long because you get him in the first game. Uh, we can flash the lineup here. Uh, Jeremy Pena will lead off for the Astros and play shortstop. Batting second, Alec Bregman, their third baseman. Batting third, Jordan Alvarez playing left field. Batting fourth, Jose Abreu playing first base. Batting fifth, Kyle Tucker out in right field. Batting sixth, Yanier Diaz. Uh, he is going to be their designated hitter. Batting seventh, Jake Myers out in center field. Martin Maldonado is their catcher. And Mauricio Dubon will be filling in for Jose Altuve at second base. That's their one through nine. But what's the bigger story? New season, new manager for the White Sox in 2023, or at least tonight, or Jose Abreu being on the other side. Well, I'll say this, Herb, you and I annoyed everybody here and everybody uh, on, on the internet talking about how much the White Sox were going to miss Jose Abreu and how they should have tried to resign. And we talked about that for months. Mm -hmm. uh, well, guess what? If you needed an example of how good Jose Abreu is, the reigning World Series champions went out and got him <laughs> and put him clean up in their opening day lineup. Hmm. Hmm. Says something about Jose, doesn't it? Yeah, sandwiched between two all-stars, maybe one of the best left-handed hitters in the game and, well, another best left-handed hitter in the game with Jordan Alvarez and Kyle Tucker. But, like, that lineup without Altuve, still formative, but without Altuve, it doesn't look as, like, daunting. I don't know what Dylan Cease is going to do today, but looking at Mauricio Dubon, watch him hit four home runs today, I feel a little <laughs> bit better. I feel a lot bit better than seeing Tuve in there hitting one of our pitches really hard and being annoying at second base and this Houston Astros fan base being jerks as they usually are. Well, and there, there's a good reason why they've been jerks. Obviously, reigning champions, and we'll uh, see either banning razors and, and, and the rings tomorrow or today. Uh, but uh, the big thing, I, I think, has to be uh, – now I'm, I'm blanking. Uh, it's very weird being out in public. Um, <laughs> The Astros have won 10 straight opening days. Yeah. So this is a huge streak. They can be the record setters. The Boston Bean Eaters hold the current record of wow. 10 straight opening day wins. The But in triple A, they won in double A, they won at the MLB level. Like this is a force here. So the White Sox, even. Yeah, we're good right now. Yeah, it's just, it's just like a really finicky thing. Like the light, slightest clutch. Like I'm not moving my left leg on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> be there at the end of the year 
But hey, this is the this is the test you're trying to get past. This is the bar that you're trying to reach. Well, we had, we had our season preview uh, show yesterday, and the title was "Can the White Sox Win the World Series in 2023?" I was a bad host, didn't ask you guys that. Can that team still show out in 2023? Is the talent still there to they're, win the World Series? No, they're not. They're not as good as this team they're going to go against right now with this Astros team. They're not as good as that most of the teams in the AL East. And, I mean, I guess you could say in 2005, you could say about the same thing. But you got like 99 percentile years from most of the players. Can this team, if they all perform at the back of the baseball card, be good, be 95 wins good? Yes. But are they a matchup with full Otuve, with this whole pitching staff of the Houston Astros going on all cylinders? Ryan Presley at the end of the bat, uh, bullpen. If this guy's going to come back and Liam Hendricks. Yeah, they have talent, but I don't think they're at the level of the other teams that are the top of the American League, especially not the National League. But you only have to face one of those teams. So, yeah, can they win? Possible. But will they win? I would say no. I would say 95% no. Well, here's what I'll say. Herb, nothing you're saying doesn't make sense. But I think here's what I would add on to it. Dot, 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 today. No, I, I and I'm serious because I think today, no, I don't think anybody out there is going to say that the White Sox are going to win the World Series. That being said, this is a six-month season. Yep. And the talent that the White Sox have on their roster is still there. It didn't go anywhere. It's just it didn't show up last year. Correct. Uh, if it does show up this year, we're talking about a team that we thought we were going to get when we when we were sitting and talking about a season a year ago today, right? And so that could happen. Yeah, sure. But they got to make a big change in everybody's minds over the course of the next six months. They need to hit. They need to pitch. They need to stop making mistakes. If they do all those things, then people are going to look up and be like, oh, this is that White Sox team. Okay, <laughs> I see what it is now. But that's not what we have as we sit here and talk right now. So they, what do they got to go do, Sean? They got to prove it. They got to prove it. Yeah. Uh, and funny, we do have predictions up at all CHGO talking about the White Sox season and our predictions for 2023 and the American League. <laughs> I, myself, or uh, I and myself are the same person. Uh, myself, Herb, Vinny, and Jared Willis uh, all have our predictions up at all CHGO. And the question was, the best case scenario for the White Sox is, I said 92 and 70 with an AL Central title. Herb said 95 and 67, AL Central champs. And you said, not sure the other guys understood the question. <laughs> I, I just don't know if that ceiling is there. I, I don't know if all of those players. But it have, is. Mathematically, somewhere it is. That's the point I I'm guess, making. Right? I guess. Yes. <laughs> and that's, I, did, I did like yesterday. One of the first comments was uh, Vinny would say, yes, all 29 teams technically have a chance to win the title in 2023. Worst case scenario, too? Uh, what was it? <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, 0 and 162. Yeah, yeah. that would be the worst <laughs> case scenario. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. I don't uh, know if Pedro gets fired after this. <laughs> we'll see if it's one of 162 or, you know, one of 162 going the other way. We'll see if the White Sox are going to start 1 and 0 or 0 and 1 today. Uh, we still have lineups for the White Sox to get to. We have the pitching matchup of Dylan Cease versus Framber Ooh, Valdez that's a good as one. well. Very good one. Uh, no Justin Verlander, but still, that Houston Astros rotation it's is very loaded. scary. It's loaded. And you got Hunter Brown winning the rookie of the year coming out of that rotation. So you always Always like going to the well of picking Astros pitchers to win awards. Well, boy, it hasn't. It has. It's not like it's failed too often. So <laughs> there you one. go. Come back and Cy Young. You got last year. Yep. Uh, two for two. I do want to give a couple of shout outs. Uh, obviously, the whistle setting us up here. It's been fantastic. Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to John, uh, the pizza delivery guy from Nona's, who came over with two stadium pizzas. Uh, he was talking in the chat yesterday uh, about uh, Ruthie and numbers and Shohei Otani versus Dave Ruth. Hey, and it's the real Big Dave. Big Dave's in the house. It's not an imposter who's uh, pretending to be you in the YouTube comments. It's not, it's not two kids in a Big Dave suit. <laughs> uh, but uh, very excited to see the turnout here. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm matching I'm matching Robert Roger Clemens, who's also rocking, rocking the gold chain in the ESPN booth. Uh, <laughs> that was rough. Absolutely. The hair matches the chain today. Uh, I, I'm th glad we won't have to listen to that broadcast today. Uh, also, we do have free T-shirts as well. Not free T-shirts. We're giving away T-shirts. So if anyone is uh, uh, listening and want to play some trivia uh all oh, right we got pete oh, that got everybody to per perk up, didn't it what's that oh we also got an alloy bobblehead and uh mini minoso plaque all right so pete since you raised your hand what do you want the shirt or the one of these all right 
You got to answer a trivia question, though. It, it's an easy one. And, and I, I usually give out hard trivia questions. Who led the White Sox in home runs? Who led the White Sox in home runs in 2022? Andrew Vaughn. There you go. Feel free to pick a shirt. XL here. Uh, there's some more under here as well. XL. Uh, feel free to take it. Uh, Pete Ann winning the first T-shirt. Uh, well, then I got to get the T-shirt back. Uh, maybe that's where we should go too. The longest tenured White Sox. Now officially off the team. Outright release for Larry Garcia. Yeah. The, the longest tenured White Sox is now Tim Anderson. Wow. Uh, because uh, Larry Garcia uh, put on uh, release waivers, uh, unconditional release waivers earlier today as the roster became official. We've been talking about that for a couple of days. It seemed like it was something that was going to happen. Reported a few days ago by the folks who were down in Arizona. But uh, yeah, the hey, uh, Herb, you use the word meritocracy see a lot and I think that's what finally uh, took root here not that the White Sox weren't interested in having one of those but they made a financial investment in a guy that they thought could play a role and play it very well because of circumstances outside of their control he was not able to play that role and the role that he did play he did not play very well so um, here you got a guy now in Hans or Alberto who's going to be playing a lot of backup infield who has history with the new manager in Pedro Grifol not to mention a rousing stamp of approval for the kind of guy that he has been in clubhouses past um, and you get Romy Gonzalez who uh, surprisingly in my opinion will uh, be playing that Ben Zobra type role roster came together i think even though there wasn't much in the way of drama uh we got some in the last week and and then i'd be remiss to uh, uh to leave out gregory santos who is a, a part of this bullpen uh uh making making the team over some guys maybe we thought uh, would would be there instead he sent nick avila back to san francisco yep poor guy and isn't it possible that Larry can be back on the white Sox? i'm sorry if they're yes. raining everybody's yes. parade like if he clears waivers no one claims him and accepts a minor league uh, assignment, he could be down in there at Charlotte and be ready for the call up for everybody. So don't get too happy, guys. Well, he's been released though. I thought they're, he, gonna, they're going to oh, release, him. release the waivers. 100%? The specific waivers are release waivers. Oh, and so man, by, sad. I, I, he would become a free agent if the White Sox would want to bring him back on some sort of low cost minor league deal. They could, I suppose, but uh, you'd have to they're imagine. Them anyways. you'd have to imagine that with his experience, he could probably find some sort of rebuilding team that would happily give him a lot of at-bats, right? Hey, Pirates, here we go. Yeah, I was about to say, the Pirates were knocking on his door back after uh, Larry the Legend uh, made his mark in the 2021 ALDS versus these Astros. And was it Valdez himself, right? It was a lefty, or was it uh, Garcia? Oh, it was uh, Yimmy Garcia. Yimmy Garcia, there Yimmy. you go. Uh, that, that was the uh, legendary King 3 home run for Larry Garcia. Again, we are out here at the whistle, 49-11, West Cicero. I saw uh, Street, no call. Matt Ramsey <laughs> uh, show up with Matt Ramsey Power Hour. Who uh, else was here? The, the 108 uh, tourney champ herself, uh, the first woman uh, champion at Nally White Sox. And uh, Messi Carroll in the uh, chat saying, I'll be there. Don't worry, boys, at 10 p.m., LOL. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be here. Uh, the first Ooh. Cubs game. Under three hours. Uh, that that Cub game yeah. was under two and a half hours. There you go. Pitch clock, baby. Ooh, I'm excited for let's it. Go. I mean, is that going to be the biggest maybe storyline outside of Jose Abreu and what the White Sox look like and like non, you know, White Sox related, I guess, just kind of generic. I will say this. It will be to all of you guys the most noticeable thing in the game tonight. If you weren't the kind of person who was, you know, dialed into spring training games. And I know, you know, some people were, uh, you know, heavily involved in those. And some people are like, call me when they start counting. If you're one of those latter people, you're going to be like, holy smokes, what sport am I watching? Uh, the pitch clock is here to stay and it is a good thing i'll tell you that much because uh these games are not going to drag on forever and ever anymore though i do believe there was one earlier today already that did hit that three hour mark even with the pitch clock but yeah that cub game was breezy <laughs> yeah if they go two hours and 22 minutes i'm in i don't care if they win or lose i actually do care if they win or lose but you know i'll be a little bit more happy if a white Sox loss is a quick one because give me give me a fast no Instead of a slow yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, and we appreciate uh, everyone in the chat uh, hanging out with us as well. Uh, other Sean saying hit that like button. we got 77 people watching, but only 10 likes. So we'd appreciate the love here. Steven, why don't we flash the White Sox uh, lineup? Because Vinny brought up Romy Gonzalez, a.k.a. Ben Zobrist. Uh, and we can look <laughs> one through nine. A big surprise for Andrew Vaughn lovers as well. We'll get to it. Leading off, though, no surprise, Tim Anderson playing shortstop. Batting second, Luis Robert Jr. Make sure you fit, fix that for the next Steven, Steven, I'll, I'll get it. it. I'll get it. He'll, he'll be in center field. 
we need a we hey. need a we need a swear jar. We need a Luis Robert Jr. swear <laughs> jar, just like we had the uh, the Cleveland Ball Club one last year. The Stan Bowman one, and I still did the Indians podcast. thing yesterday too. Oh, you just hey. did it right now, Stephen. <laughs> respect his dad. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> it's gonna take some time getting used to. Uh, the biggest surprise for me, batting third. Andrew Vaughn at first base. I get Jose Abreu is batting fourth. Third is objectively better. Andrew Vaughn is now better than Jose Abreu by mm. lineup math. Mm. Uh, batting fourth, Aloy Jimenez at designated hitter. Thankfully, batting fifth, Yohan Moncada at third base. Batting sixth, the $75 million man, Andrew Benatendi in left field. Batting seventh, Yasmani Grandal at catcher. Batting ace, Elvis Andrews at second base. And batting nine, Roman Gonzalez in right field. Let's start there. Oscar Colas. Got the call-up video. He, I thought he was going to have the new patch on his jersey as well. And it's Romy Gonzalez in right field, probably because there's a lefty starter. Yeah, I mean, listen, what did Pedro Grafal say, right? He was going to play these matchups. Though I do think that this opens up the conversation of just what is right field going to look like over the course of the entire season? Is this a timeshare? Is this a platoon? Or is this just, hey, on this day against this pitcher, that was the guy to go with. Oscar Colas will be out there the majority of the time. Are we going to see Aloy Jimenez in right field? Who knows? I, I we, we are going to find out over the coming days and weeks and months. Uh, but right off the bat, game one, your starter in right field is Romy Gonzalez. I don't think anybody would have said that uh, really at any point up until the last week or so. And I understand there's a lefty on the bump, but this kid is supposed to be highly touted. He made the team for a reason. Face him versus the tough lefties. It doesn't, I mean, it matters, but this kid needs to be thrown to the fire immediately. Steel sharp, sharpen steel. So I don't like it initially, but I get it because people take these first games as there's a lot of game left. I get it, but these games, as I always say, and as John Furleek said when he brought the pizzas in, April and March games matter just as much as the September games. So if we're going to be having this guy as our rookie of the year, which I have him down as my rookie of the year, let's put him in the damn game. I don't care if it's a lefty or righty. He has to hit no matter what. And I, uh, Pete Hansen, move him up as well. Uh, give, give him that uh, opportunity. The thing, too, is you know he is a lefty and going up against a lefty. We've seen him go to a contact approach. Like It's not like he's a rookie that he's just going up there swing happy it does seem like he tenders his approach to left-handed hitters uh differently or left-handed pitchers compared to right-handed pitchers so i would have been fine to see him get thrown into the fire today versus framber valdez and like you mentioned especially you know last year um around october if you told me leary garcia would be the opening day lineup and it's not at second base it's at right field i would have been absolutely you mean shocked Romy gonzalez but yes that's what i meant yeah, what yeah. did i say you said leary garcia oh, well, that's I right. shocked uh, he's not on the team no, he's not on the team me. can we get uh, a swear jar for that too <laughs> yeah, come on <laughs> hopefully i don't want to bring him up uh, but uh, I'll, I'll just i'll say this oscar colas is a rookie he's never played major league baseball before tomorrow is going to be a fire for him you know what i mean you say throw him in the fire throw him in the fire there is a point where we can say hey it's going to happen. It's early. That there's nothing earlier than opening day. Uh, you know that that is that game two of 162. Oscar Colas is going to be feeling the same emotions he would had he played in or had he started, I should say, in tonight's game. That op that throw him into the fire uh, mentality that you guys are speaking to. If he's starting in right field tomorrow, you're that's what you're getting. Because which will happen, be it tomorrow or, or Saturday or whenever. And I feel even with Luis Aloy and Andrew Vaughn, it wasn't really thrown into the fire right away. I feel like they, they even gave him a break on, on opening day uh, when they first came up. I don't I don't think maybe Aloy, because uh, Aloy was delayed a little bit when he came up with the Royals. I don't think he started that first game. I think the same with... Here's Romy Gonzalez. Um, let's go to that pitching matchup here, Stephen. We got Dylan Cease versus Framber Valdez, the righty versus the lefty. Uh, Dylan Cease is now kind of the, the front runner for the Cy Young as he was finished second last year in the AL Cy Young voting. Justin Verlander first, and now he is a New York Met. Looking at the pitching matchup, Dylan Cease in 2022, 184 innings pitched, a 220 ERA, 126 a lot, a hits allowed. 227 strikeouts to 78 walks. He led the major leagues in walks and a 180 ERA plus major league average being 100. So he was 80% better than the average MLB pitcher. Framber Valdez in 201 and one third innings, a 282 ERA, 166 hits allowed, a 194, uh, 194 Ks to 67 walks and an ERA plus of 1. 
37. We've seen Valdez a couple times. Uh, last year, six innings, eight hits, three earned runs, no walks, seven Ks. And then also in August, seven innings, seven hits, two earned runs, three walks, six Ks. So it's not like the White Sox have been unsuccessful during the Astros, but how much of 2022 and the performances against Fran Valdez or, you know, Luis Garcia are you really taking in? Because now it is a new team with Andrew Benatendi batting sixth and a healthy TA, a healthy Luis Robert Jr. Yeah, when you talk about these previous performances, uh, you know, be they against pitchers or, or teams in general even, uh, you're talking about that on an individual level for these hitters, right? I mean, listen, Andrew Benatendi was in the American League last year. He's seen these Astros pitchers before. He has his own uh, history against uh, these guys that he can – really kind of does what Tim Anderson wants. Yeah. Uh, but let's say Aloy Jimenez is going to go up there and he's going to lean on his own personal history against these guys, knowing what they throw, knowing what they're going to come at them with. Not necessarily, oh boy, we got eight hits off of him last year, so here we go kind of thing. Um, but yeah, listen, uh, there's a pitcher tonight pitching in this game who I picked to be the American League Cy Young winner in 2023. Uh and he, he plays for the Astros. So uh, we're going to go ahead. Because, you know, it's me. That's me. I have to pick an Astro to win Astros the Cy Young. Uh, but, yeah, uh, Valdez is really, really good. He's the top starter on a very, very good rotation, who the White Sox are going to see an awful lot of over the next four days. Uh, I don't like to uh, make much about the results that happen in the opening series of the season. But I will say this. Uh, if they hit these guys well, it goes to show you that they can maybe do something against some good pitchers. Vinny's the new host of HSTN. My man over here loves the Houston Astros. Man, oh good. Uh, I do not. I do not blame you, Vinny. I mean, the man threw what twenty five consecutive uh, quality starts, so three three earned runs or less in six innings. The White Sox had their work cut out for him versus Framber Valdez, and Dylan Cease on the other side has his work cut out for him because he himself has a high ERA versus these Astros. But who doesn't? Except for like Carlos Rodon, who dominated those Astros in two thousand twenty one. Um, Miss him. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mean, so do the Yankees. Yeah, <laughs> my God. Hopefully that man is okay. But like, it's the white. It's incumbent on the White Sox hitters to have patient at bats. And I know saying that right now with Tim Anderson, the first damn guy batting is foolhardy. But patient at bats, make this man work. Make him get into his secondary third pitches instead of just going up there and swinging on first pitch. Let him come to you. Don't be over. Over, like, excited. It's the first game of the year. This guy's got good stuff for a reason, and it can shut you down really quickly if you are aggressive and way too aggressive. It's the first game of the year, so he's going to be a little erratic. He won't be at his best, so don't help him out. But, hey, we're talking about a pitching matchup, and the reason that this pitching matchup is so good is because both of these pitchers are really, really damn good. Dylan Cease finishing second in the Cy Young vote last year. Uh, like you said, he's probably the favorite maybe going into this year if, if we're only just talking about the carryover effect. Uh, but, man, he, he deserves that because he was really great last year. Uh, him and Lance Lynn are going to power this team this year, and uh, it starts tonight because, again, first game of the year, fine, whatever. But if he can go out there, Herb, like you said, against a team that is just loaded with great hitters, one of them being the guy who uh, was his teammate for his entire career up until this point, uh, it is going to uh, be a – obviously positive thing for Dylan Cease to get off on that right foot. Well, and we even saw last year, though, Dylan kind of got off to a rocky, rocky start. Uh, you know, obviously he played Detroit in his first game, and he's dominated Detroit all throughout his career. But in April, an ERA of 327, and then once in May, you know, seven innings, 11 Ks, one hit, and then he pretty much did that from May 15th to about the middle of August when he saw the Astros again. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if Dylan isn't, overpowering if he isn't able to get high strikeout numbers i would hate to see the walks return but that seems to be the biggest bugaboo the biggest thing that he needs to fix because if he can walk less than 65 guys i mean fran brevelda has just got to 200 innings and watched walk about 64 guys um you could be a fantastic pitcher and possibly put yourself in that cy young uh, uh race so uh, i'm very excited to see what dylan uh can show they show a sh shoot they showed a shot of him walking out to the mound uh looking cool calm comfortable and he, he showed a lot of that last year and that was a lot of the maturity that we saw in that pitcher grow and grow. And obviously the, the slider became a, a nasty pitch. And that might be the storyline today if he's really dominant. Uh, but against the Astros, it'd be nice where he gets five innings, three earned runs, especially opening day. You yeah. know, just, just set up the bullpen for a nice game. You know, don't let it get out of hand because, you know, we know this Astros lineup is very powerful. I want to be greedy. I want to ask for six. He's our ace now. <laughs> I understand it's the first game of the year, but you're our ace versus the best team in baseball. Come on up. Five innings is for 
Mike Clevenger and the people at the back of the in rotation. I expect more from Dylan Cease. So I understand it's the first game, but six innings is a minimum for that guy every time he goes out. I know there's going to be bad starts in between there, but he needs to be that guy. If he wants the, that money that he wants, and he wants to be labeled the ace of the White Sox, six innings is minimum. Yeah, I don't think that's being Grady Herb. I think that's expecting the guy to be one of the best pitchers in baseball, which is what he is. Uh, and it, it, it should be six innings every time out. I think he'll tell you the same thing. I think every ro- pitcher in that rotation would tell you the same thing, that they want to probably go seven every time out, but that's not uh, usually how, how it works on a regular basis. But listen, Dylan Cease is, is coming off of a fantastic season. The Astros are going to know what, what to expect, right? Because that's baseball, the chess match, right? you got to make your adjustments. Maybe the hitters make a little bit of adjustment here at the start to him but uh he's got to go after him and and if and sean really the the main thing is what you said it was which is the walks and if I wouldn't expect that on a daily or a every fifth day basis from him, but hey, that would be a nice way to start things off. Well, the Astros are so good. Minute Maid Park is just a hellhole to pitch in because you have the Crawford boxes and Alex Bregman, very good at making contact. We know Jose Abreu, very good at making contact. Kyle Tucker is a lefty. He won't be able to probably take advantage of those Crawford boxes, but throwing 97, especially high in the zone, as long as you're able to get the barrel through the zone, you'll probably have a good shot at putting one deep. So that's the one thing that I have concerns about with Dylan is just, He was pretty contact. uh, He he didn't give up a lot of hits, but um, he allows contact. He allows, you know, batters to make contact. Throwing 97, especially to major league hitters like Jose Abreu, I I do worry that will probably let a couple go over the uh, (laughs) the the uh, the, I was Crawford boxes. Yeah, Uh, the wall is the word. (laughs) I just think that you pitch the big part of the field, you'll be fine. That look center field is like 420. I know they took the Tiles Hill and all that good garbage they had back there. They still got the flagpoles out there for somebody to run into and severely injure themselves? Yeah, just dumb. (laughs) Just the dumb construction. That and the Miami ballpark. I'm glad they changed both of those things. I wish they wouldn't change it to Detroit. I, w- I like the cavernous ballpark of Detroit instead of bringing well, the fences. People have talked about like that helping Detroit hit- hitters. They moved it in like 15 feet. So instead of like 420, it's like, what, 405? So like normally long. Yeah, I, right. I really don't think it's going to be that big of an advantage. Oh, because it's think, still wait till we go there. Deep. Think about how disastrous it, is it, disastrous it is for a major league baseball team these days when someone gets hurt, when, when there's a serious injury, specifically an injury in the lower legs. You know what I mean? That, so the 2022 White Sox? That ball club built a hill and put flagpoles <laughs> in center field. That's just a terrible injury waiting there. I mean, I'm shocked we didn't see it like once a week down there when that thing existed. How could you do that to your own players? <laughs> Make the play out there like that. And they put clumsy Hunter Pence out there and he's just running like a, a deer out there, just running into walls left and right. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm glad they took out the uh, the, the tails hill. Like if I were a baseball owner and I just laid eyes on that thing, I would just gasp and be like, oh my God, this is the most terrifying thing. A baseball owner approved that being put there. <laughs> Do you know what is great for baseball? Obstacles. You know, we should put more hills uh, <laughs> behind Tim Anderson. He should run over a hill if he has to catch a, a fly ball over his head. Kind of a slalom setup might be interesting in, in some uh, You have to go up the agro Yeah, I think, <laughs> the I think you see a lot more uh, uh, inside the park homers and it's, it's like MVP baseball uh, 2005. You know, you just got to hit it up the ramp and that, that thing will go flying. Baseball needs more ramps. Yeah, I agree. Uh, <laughs> we can give out another shirt here, I think, if, if anyone. Jimbo, you want another shirt? We got XLs. All right. Again, I, I wrote very hard trivia questions, and I've been battered for that before. Yes. Um, so I'm going to give you very an easy one here. Guaranteed right field. What was its name before guaranteed right field? There you oh, go. Come he take wins. A shirt. All, All right. right. That's right. So you can get the bobblehead or the mini Minoso plaque. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> Giving away Congratulations. Hey, there all right. Uh, <laughs> Winners all around. Hey, Jimbo's the only one right now looking at me. So I was like, yeah. hey, why not get why not give Jimbo a reward? Here? Eye contact, baby. That's what it's all about. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's go back to the lineup. Batting yeah, sixth, home. Andrew Benatendi making his White Sox debut. Maybe it has to do with his success against uh, Valdez, an under uh, 600 OPS career. So lack of success. Last, lack yeah. of success. Yeah. Um, is that why? I mean, Pedro's talked about wanting consistency. So will we see Andrew Benatendi six consistently for the White Sox? I don't know. We'll find okay. out. And I and I was I was talking I was talking to Jimbo, of course, earlier before the show started, and I was talking about lineup consistency. And I said just because it just because it's different every day doesn't mean it's not consistent. That's kind of a ridiculous thing to have to say but the point being that guys are going to get days off guys are going to get moved around because of matchups guys are going to play different spots on the field perhaps the idea is that you can still have
Andy, I think, has lineup versatility, as do a lot of the players on this team. I think Moncada, Grandal, uh, Robert, and, and, and Vaughn as well. I think there's some versatility in terms of where you can put those guys in the lineup and still feel confident with where you're going to see them. All right, we're going to get to Herb's answer on Andrew Benatendi. Uh, Jose Luis, though, is saying he's here. He wants to win a shirt. We yeah. got Axel's here. Uh, All right. Vinny or Herb, if you guys have a trivia question for Jose Luis, he wants to win a shirt, you guys got to ask All right. him. I've All right. the first I got one for you. I got one for you. All right. So, Oscar Colas makes the team today. He will be wearing jersey number 22. Who is the last person to wear number 22 for the White Sox? Your hint is it was last year. I don't know this answer either. I think he's saying Tony Larusa. Tony Larusa is the correct oh, answer. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we got shirts right here. We got the CHGO script one. We got the brawler socks. And then I think this one's the uh, my favorite. The, the All right. One. There we go. Shout out to Jose Luis. Now, I was reading, I was reading today, this this very day in the athletic, they did a story about the Yankees. I guess club, the guy who's in charge of handing out jersey numbers for the Yankees, right? Yeah, and they the, don't Yankees, wanna... the Yankees have something like 17 retired jerseys <laughs> or something like that. So he's get and he's getting he's finding it hard to get guys new jersey numbers. And he said that he has recommended to Major League Baseball that they stop giving the managers and the coaches jersey numbers, which makes total sense because yes. those guys never even wear their jerseys to have most of the games. But uh, the idea being that it would free up jersey numbers because coaching staffs are now getting bigger than they ever were before. You've got double-digit you know, coaches that you've got to give out jersey numbers to. You're talking about the Yankees, who have all these jerseys numbers retired, having close to 30, 30 <laughs> numbers that the players themselves can't even pick from. So uh, an interesting idea, but there you go. That's the tie-in with the uh, trivia question there. Tony LaRusso was the previous number 22 before uh, Mr. Oscar Colas, who debuts tonight. Imagine James Crook coming out, the trainer, coming out in a full uniform. That's pretty much what the damn managers and the coaches are. They're wearing uniforms for no goddamn reason. Be like Connie Mack. Wear a full suit. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, Fedora. <laughs> that'll go. You know what? That'll. I, you know who I want to see Get do that? Get your ass out of the game. I'm Connie Mack. <laughs> I want to see. I want to see the uh, St. Louis Cardinals staff in those full wool suits in August. <laughs> I'm sure that'll be very comfortable and for everybody. The Astro Turf, where yeah. it's like 130 on uh -huh. the turf. That'll be bacon. <laughs> Frying out there. Uh, we have now had Jimbo be a winner. Uh, Pete Han was a winner. Jose Luis was a winner. Uh, you could be a winner with our sponsor, DraftKings Sportsbook. They're the official sports betting partner of CHGO in All City. And right now, they have a no sweat MLB bet. You could place a wager down of ten dollars, and if it loses, you get that wager back. I really like Jose uh, Abreu. Ever heard of him? To hit a home run tonight. That's you do? A, yeah. Famous Jose Abreu Boo. hater, Sean Anderson. Famous Boo. Jose Abreu hater. Wow. He's, he's been spited uh, as Dusty Baker is now uh, welcoming the crowd and looking at his. Uh, oh, I forgot they got the gold tinted uh, uh, jerseys and uh, hats. His first World Series trophy. Uh, I like him at plus 650 to hit a home run tonight. Why not? It's a no sweat bet. Go over to DraftKings Sportsbook, download the app now, and sign up with code CHGO. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA with code CHGO. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. I don't know if they're doing the banner raising or if they're doing ring ceremonies, but they're definitely having something. They're having a party being like, hey, we're the champions. Anybody that ever tells you that the stuff that you learn in school is not useful later in life, you tell that to these people who have to hold this giant world champion Astros banner across the infield because I looked up and I said, boy, that takes me back to kindergarten with the big uh, with the big thing, the big parachute that you're waving in yeah. gym class. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of right there. So those people, their training is being uh, called in at this point right now. And look in the outfield where it looks like they're about to unfurl the biggest American flag in the history of ever. <laughs> they're going to have one person price. just run it out there too. Just Everything's big in Texas, Hale's apparently. Hale. Yep. Hey, even the flags. Uh, there's Pedro Grafal wearing number five. Daryl Boston wearing number eight. Uh, Doesn't even, that look ridiculous? It does look It just looks ridiculous. Mike Tozar wearing 37. Take uh, off Ray Durham's number, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> Bo Jackson is rolling in his grave, Daryl Boston. Still alive. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, okay. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? Did Bar I, okay. I, I cut you off on Andrew Benatendi. Are you surprised the $75 million man is batting six? No, not at all. Left-hander going to the uh, bump today for the Houston Astros. He's a man. He's the only lefty in the game for the White Sox in the current starting lineup. So he's got to play. He's an everyday left fielder. I'm not surprised that Pedro put him down there. But I expect when a right-hander goes to the bump, we'll do more like the spring training game where he was batting third, which I didn't like. I like him more of in the second spot. I think your best hitter, I know people in analytics uh, departments argue about this. I think your best hitter should be third or fourth. 
your drive-in guy should be fourth, and the second guy should be more of a on uh, on base guy as we look to as our guy Lance Flynn, Lucas Giolito, and Michael Kopech going to give support to their guy Dylan Cease. I'm gonna go hang out in the bullpen for a bit. Hey, this is where Mark Burley uh, famously drank beers in Very that true. bullpen. Very true. Uh, if you are looking to watch this game and you are not here at the whistle on 95th Street in Cicero, in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma, in Oklahoma. 95th Street in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, can, you can sign up with two, uh, Fubo, uh, fubo.tv.com slash chgo. They have 140 live channels of sports shows, movies, and news. We told Vinny about it today, and you can take advantage of uh, live streaming TV from any device, and you can watch most Chicago sports for the lowest price. You can start watching immediately with a seven-day free trial. There's no contract, no cable, no hassle. Just sign up and start watching. They have over 1,000 hours of cloud DVR included at no extra charge. And you can watch local teams while traveling. Right now, you can watch college hockey, the NCAA tournament on ESPN2, ESPN News, and ESPN News. Uh, ESPN U. Uh, luckily for you, the game tonight, Astros and White Sox on ESPN. So you can watch that with Fubo. Uh, and that Frozen Four is from April 6th to April 8th. So watch the White Sox on NBC Sports Chicago with Fubo TV. You can use the link in the description to sign up for 50% off your first month of Fubo Pro. And they also have the Marquee Network as well. So if you're a baseball fan and looking to watch both the Cubs and the White Sox, they have you covered over at FuboTV.com. Com. And with Fubo, you can watch MLB Network because my old system did not have that. It's great to have MLB back. It's great to have MLB Network back. And even though I'm a White Sox fan, they have Marquee Network. Sometimes I just want to catch a baseball game. And the Cubs happen to be on. My old network didn't have Marquee, even though it sucks. I watch it on Fubo TV. They did have it on, be on, but blink and you might have missed it. Oh. That, that two-hour, 20-minute game earlier today. Please, Jesus, do that again. Um, as we wrap up here from the whistle again, we'll have a post game show and a watch party from everybody here. Make sure you're yes. drinking Goose Island as well. We're drinking the 312 Raspberry Jams, and they are it's fantastic. very good. Uh, we have, uh, you know, very famously made famous on uh, the White Sox pregame shows on NBC Sports Chicago and uh, Comcast Sportsnet, uh, the click to pick. We like to do pick to click. It's nope. very new, very you, you flipped it. it. Did I do it? Yep, I, I wrote it, it down and tried to make sure I got it right. You we it. do. Pick to click. Nope. Nope. Click, it's a, just we think do, about it alphabetically. Click to pick. C for P. We do click to pick. As always, friends. Mercy. Who do you guys have to click to pick? Is it Jose Abreu? No. <laughs> I almost picked Jose Abreu. I thought that would have been kind of funny. I also almost just wanted to make Sean mad because I got to pick before him. I just wanted to take Andrew Vaughn to, to see him stew in a bit. Should've. But I'm going with Tim Anderson because I am Captain Obvious. Uh, Tim Anderson's going to go up. He's probably going to hit the first pitch into right field for a base hit. <laughs> Uh, there you go. That's my that's my click to pick. I'm going to Lloyd. It's a big year for Lloyd to stay healthy, to drive in runs. He is the offensive guy this year. He is the the RBI guy this year. And with the second half last year, I see it coming. All he needs is health, like most White Sox hitters and or pitchers. Uh, a couple players in this lineup have pretty decent success against Valdez. Jimenez is one of those one for three with an 833 OPS. Tim Anderson, one for eight, but that one is a home run. Uh, one walk and one strikeout for Tim Anderson against Valdez as well. Brian Dahl's had success two for five in his plate appearances, a 900 OPS with a walk. Roman Gonzalez is one for three with a double. Maybe that's why he's batting ninth today. Yon Moncada, who's up there, he's got a 1061 OPS versus Valdez. Uh, three hits and 11 at-bats and one walk. And then Andrew Vaughn is your leader in this lineup. Sebi is technically the best hitter against Valdez, but Vaughn batting third. Five for 11 career against Valdez, one home run, one walk, two strikeouts, but a slugging percentage of 727, an Damn. OBP of 500. Andrew Vaughn is my click to pick, batting third. I could have stole it from him, guys. It's the year. It's the campaign. You won't because you're afraid. I'm not afraid. Andrew Vaughn is my man. He's going to lead us out of the darkness and into greatness in 2023. Uh, I am picking the Astros to win 6-2. to two. Wow. <laughs> what a hater. I'm going to go positive today. I think Dylan Seats delivers. I think the White Sox win a game that's going to be a slugfest. Six to five, White Sox win. Mercy. I'm going the opposite direction. I say the White Sox lose, but one to nothing. Great Ooh. effort by Dylan Seats. The one run, Jose Abreu home run. Vinny oh. is hoping for a pitcher's matchup that takes 215. <laughs> uh, we love yeah, that. Yeah, I want to see him. And, I want to see him beat that Cubs time. <laughs> and, and does uh, Jose look into the White Sox dugout and say, yeah, I think so. <laughs> How you like me now? Hey. I think he does that scream coming around third base like he did last <laughs> time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> His sprints the whole way around the bases. That's going to do it for the CHGO Live White Sox podcast from the whistle uh, at 95th and Cicero. We appreciate everyone for coming out. We are going to be doing a post game after the game. Game starts in about 10 minutes or so. So make sure you head over to ESPN. It's Dylan Cease versus Framber Valdez. 
previewing the first game of 162, and we will be here for the next nine days or so. Uh, our next off day is the 7th, so we will have you covered with pre- and post-games for most, if not all, of those games. So very excited for the 2023 year. Excited for the White Sox to prove it in Pedro Griffal's first year. That's Vinny Duber. You can follow him on Twitter, at Vinny Duber. He's our CHGO White Sox beat writer. That's Herb Lawrence. You can follow him on Twitter, at Acknowall23. He's our CHGO White Sox community leader. I'm Sean Anderson. You can follow me on Twitter, at Sean underscore W underscore Anderson. Again, we are here at the Whistle Sports Bar in 95th and Cicero. Make sure you come out. They have the Angrish Irishman, which is a cider with a shot of Jameson over ice and a Shamrock Martini. So you can hang out and uh, get a little buzz while watching the White Sox Astros game here at the Whistle. Thank you to our whole crew for setting this up, Stephen Nicholas for producing, and everyone for coming out. We will talk to you after the game. And we got more shirts to give away. And we got more game. shirts. There you go. And the post-game party. shirts. And a beanie. Uh, so uh, <laughs> make sure that you're hanging out with us on the post game here on the CHGO Sports YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe and like on your way out. We will talk to you after the game. Go White Sox. Woo!